There's two minutes left, okay? <laughs> okay. It's great to see that Force of Nature, The Dry 2, is now being released in February in cinemas. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking, as always, to the writer-director of uh, Force of Nature, Dry 2, Robert Connolly. Robert, welcome again to Movie Metropolis. Great to talk to you, Peter. I think we've been talking about my films for a very long time now, so it wouldn't be the same without a chat with you about my latest film. So nice <laughs> to see you and nice to talk about the film. Well, I appreciate that. And and I think it's important to note that you've been involved in so many really uh, interesting films. You've produced them, you've directed them and so on. So um, it, it it's important to talk about the Australian film industry and your context in that being so pivotal, I think. Look, I've had a great career. I've got to pinch myself sometimes that I've had the opportunity. And one of the things that really probably set that in motion early was that I wanted to make a wide range of films, but I only thought I was the right director for a smaller part of them. And so that, that opened up an opportunity to work with other directors. I've got a great love of emerging talent and you know, I'm just delighted in the last year to have worked with Job Clerk on, you know, Sweet As and mm. Elena Keener on Petrol and Sari Braithwaite and Chloe Regali on um, Because We Have Each Other and films that I otherwise might not have been involved in. So, and that, and that keeps me on my toes a bit in my own work too, you know, having younger <laughs> emerging talent with all that fierce, bold adventure of early career work. You know, you get to my point and the danger is that you start feeling like you know how to do it you can serve you know you've got to shake the tree a bit harder mm. the more rigid and entrenched you get deeper into your career so no I've I've loved the give and take of my own work as a director and my producing work good on you for that that's uh, that's excellent to hear so uh force of nature dry too with the success of the dry was a follow-up film always on the cards not really, actually. We made The Dry. We didn't even really think about a follow-up film. Uh, I went off and made Blueback. So we finished The Dry, went off to, and during the quarantine period and was in WA making Blueback, Amazing Adventure. I came back from that and was like, what should I do next? And it was a great uh, discussion, really. Um, Eric Banner and I and the producers um, just going, you know, do you think we should make a sequel? And then, you know, looking at this book and going, wow, five women in the bush, only four come out, corporate retreat. You know, I grew up in the bush. It was like, I can film in the bush. And then the unique nature of that story. Like, it's amazing, actually, with Eric, that the thing that drove him to want to do it was not his own character, although he was very excited by the journey Aaron Fort goes on in this film. It's another deep, deeper into the psychology of his character. But these five characters and what it would be like to, you know, cast these amazing actors they are so interesting and i want to talk about uh, casting in a moment but um is this also uh, uh, an adaptation of jane harper's novel it is yeah yeah so she wrote a follow-up book force of nature and uh yeah so it's another adaptation so jane you know we had to go and sit down with jane and say look we're interested in doing this this is how we do it and she was like great sounds fantastic you know and she's always been so supportive of us and that's a much loved book like The Dry. So we, um, you know, you always feel that responsibility to get it right. I'm delighted that Jane Harper loves the film, thankfully. Otherwise, her fans would be coming up to me in the street and giving, abusing me, I'm sure. No. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's exciting. Okay. No, oh, that, interesting to hear that. Now, you do have an excellent cast uh, apart from Eric, and I was so pleased to see Anna Torv and Jacqueline McKenzie and Richard Roxburgh and Tony Briggs and Deborah Lee Furness. You, you've know. really put together a really good cast. Yeah, you know, as you know, my wife, um, Jane Norris, casts all my films and she has a great ability to kind of juggle between new talent, um, CeCe Stringer, Lucy Ansel, much like in The Dry, you know, those young actors in the dry have all gone on to have amazing careers. But also, you know, actors we may have not seen on our screens for a while. Deborah Lee Furness was her first um, suggestion for that role. And Eric and I were like, wow, will she do it? Um, there was no hesitation that she'd be the right person for that role. So, and, the, you know, and of course, people like Anna Torv and Robin McLeavy, you know, we, we have such a great depth of, you know, terrific actors that... Um, came together for this ensemble it was pretty amazing there was there was one day on set when we had all the people you mentioned you know Deborah Lee's there Jacqueline McKenzie Richard Roxburgh 
you know, but then Tony Briggs, who wrote the Sapphires as well, of course, and, you know, everyone's saying, around, I introduce all the Carneric and introduce them to the crew and the crew applauded. And it was because they were standing there with these icons of our national cinema who've all contributed to very significant films that are part of the canon of our, of our national story. So to have them all working together in one film as a filmmaker was just delightful and, you know, I had a spring in my step every day that I turned up. I'm sure you did, but you really put them through their paces because you shot this in uh, the Dandenong Ranges, the basin, that sort of area, yeah. and it looks like the uh, the environment was not a very easy one to negotiate. It's pretty tricky, you know, filming in the heart of winter, pouring rain, leeches, mud, you know, like it was pretty <laughs> tough. We had a pretty battle-hardened crew by the end. And uh, we were certainly trying to get into places that otherwise filmmakers would um, not be able to if you were on a much bigger scale studio, American studio film. But I love that. I love that about filmmaking. I love that um, you can take an audience into worlds that they maybe haven't experienced or or see the world on the screen with shoot on these large format cameras and you know, trying to make sure that the audience feels that it engulfs them. And, th and the same thing happens for the actors. So you put the actors in that world, the performances have more of a visceral, truthful quality because they're um, the actors. It's a survival story and the actors are kind of trying to survive. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's the adventure of cinema, I think. It is, it is. And uh, and speaking of cinematography, Andrew Comets, uh, uh doing such a great job with the cinematography as always. Yeah, I worked with him for the first time on The Slap, actually, back at the, uh, you know, and then I did um, uh, the Julian Assange biopic Underground with him and Blueback. So he's, he's a long-term collaborator in my career and I'm really delighted that his work is as strong, you know, as in, and watching his career just go from strength to strength. But he's a real trooper. He, he enjoyed the adventure of that too. You never heard him complaining about the leeches and the rain. <laughs> I, I was just wondering as I was watching this uh, film ab about how the leeches and, and the environment and so on must have impacted on uh, some of your cast because I was I was getting a bit worried that uh, they were right in the mire of it all. <laughs> uh, you know who was the real leader? Deborah Lee Furness. I love that. Uh -huh. It just took everyone, you know, because if you imagine Hopeton Falls, in the Otways, incredibly beautiful. But to film there, the days are very short in winter. We'd have to arrive in the dark. We'd have to walk down into the falls in the dark, carrying gear in. The actors would have to come down in the dark. Then the minute the light kicked, we'd start filming. So there's no easy way to do this. It's mm. tricky, but it's beautiful. It's a key iconic moment in the film. Um, mm. So I think the spirit of the cast was excellent, like really excellent. They, these actors knew. I think really good actors know that if they're in a world, if they're put in a, a an environment, that um, that it can help their performance. It can help give that veracity to their performance. So no, I I thought the cast were incredible actually. Well, you did an excellent job because it uh, it certainly is a, a really well shot film. The tension is there, and uh, and the way it uh, uh, the outcome is, which of course we won't spoil for audiences. Uh, I, I found really interesting. So uh, look, well done on on your structure of the film. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. And the music too from Peter Rayburn, which sort of adds another dimension to the film, is important. Yeah, look, Peter did the drive the music too. Yeah. He's an incredible composer. It's a big, epic score. Um, you know, I have to pinch myself. I got to go to Abbey Road. We recorded it in Abbey at Abbey Road in Studio Two, where the Beatles recorded the album. I had this orchestra there. He, I mean, it was uh, incredible. And the music that he created is is wonderful. And and I guess over my career, I've become more and more um, trusting in the scale and impact of music. It was Lisa Gerard on Balibo that said to me that music is the soul of the film and it kind of unlocks something that transcends plot and narrative and even mm. mood and tension. It just goes to some other dimension. And her work on Balibo and Nigel Westlake's work on um, Blueback recently and Peter's work on Peter Rayburn's work on The Dry and Force of Nature is really working with these composers who are really reaching to try and transcend plot 
it's not just about using music to create narrative structure it's actually it's there to kind of elevate the film or, or into some other dimension really um yeah so so I love I love working with Peter amazing score Oh, again, excellent stuff. And, and uh, uh, technically, I mean, the whole film just works so well and uh, hopefully will appeal to, uh, uh, well, probably as large an audience as Saw the Dry, uh, the first film, because it's um, it's great to have a, uh, a follow-up. It's not actually a sequel, sort of, a follow-up to the first um, the first film. And, uh, and, and it's important for audiences to see films in cinema as well. Yeah, I mean, I think we all remember when The Dry came out, it was kind of the the tale of the pandemic and everyone thought cinemas were gone forever. They thought they would close, they wouldn't open, people would stay at home. And that hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. In the last six months, particularly, cinema's been very strong and people are going to the movies and we're a very social people. I mean, Australia per capita is a big cinema-going country. Mm. And so we love our cinemas. We love them regionally. We like our local cinema that we go to. We like the community sense of having a glass of wine, a chop top, seeing a, a film. The challenge then is for us as filmmakers to make films you have to see in the cinema. So, you know, that's really where my head's at. Like how do I make the best possible films that you you want to go and see at the movies that on a, you know, big night of the week you and your partner want to go to the movies and see and how do you do that? So I big actors, big stories, big visuals you know music but and and the the one thing i love though about the dry and force of nature and blueback is fits into this all australian actors i've never mm-hmm. felt oh to make it cinematic i have to bring someone in you know i've always gone no australians love australian actors and that's probably like one of the gifts in my career that i've got to work with this amazing range of extraordinary australian actors but australian audiences they love them Excellent news, and I'm, I'm yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, people are flocking back to cinemas. Uh, I must ask you though, you must have been quite frustrated because of the Screen Actors Guild strike. That because uh, originally the film was scheduled to release in August or something like that, and and of course it had to be pushed back now to February the eighth. It uh, that must have been quite frustrating for you. Yeah, it was it was okay ultimately because I think in solidarity with the actors and. You know, our cast and particularly Eric really were unable to do any press. Mm. So, and one of the things that Eric and I love doing is traveling with the film and talking to audiences. We've got a big weekend in Melbourne, you know, the Aster and the Nova and the Sun and the Classic. And, you know, we're doing QAs all over the place and special previews. And Eric and I love that. And it would have, and it's one of our favorite things. You make the film and then you take it out to the world. And it just would have been a pity to release it without any cast support. I think, it, you know, and and, I, and the timings worked out well. It's a great, you know, cinema going climate over the summer. There are about 12 films exhibitors tell me that people were seeing a whole range of films. Unlike the year before it was just Avatar, 50% of the box office. This year, lots of films. So people have got more in the habit of seeing films all the time. And so I'm really delighted to be releasing Force of Nature into the world at a time when people are going to the movies again. Yes, absolutely right. And I'm glad you mentioned earlier Sweet As because that's uh, such an enjoyable film and, of course, is in the mix for the uh, Actor Awards, etc. cetera, it is indeed, coming up very shortly. Yes, exactly, yeah. on the Gold Coast. So, uh, uh, Robert, I must ask you, are you working on other productions at the moment? Uh, always things coming down the pipeline in the company. Um, we're in post-production on Adam Elliott's Stop Motion Animation, Memoir of a Snail, ah. uh, produced by Liz Carney, who I work with, produced Paper Plans and Blueback with me. Uh, that's in post-production and we'll see that a bit later in the year. I, I also produced a film over in WA recently, The Surfer, an Australian film with Nicolas Cage. So um, that was quite an adventure. So th- there's a few other films from us that you'll see uh, coming down the uh, the pipeline this year. And again, for the, for the cinema, you know, films that we're making to see at the movies. Well, that is excellent news to c- keep busy in the Australian film industry is so important. And, uh, and I'm so glad that uh, all of these uh, developments are occurring. Yeah. Yeah. I feel very optimistic and very bullish about the future for, for movies. And, um, you know, it's, uh, 
it's great to have a big film like Force of Nature in the cinema with a big commercial release. It's, it's important, I think, that Australians can go to the movies and have have a choice amongst all the, the Marvel films, that there's a couple of Australian films every now and then. <laughs> so, no, we're really, we're really happy. Absolutely agree with you. Look, terrific. Well, we've been speaking to uh, Robert Connolly, who's the writer-director of Force of Nature, The Dry 2, uh, in cinemas February 8th and uh, on previews um, prior to that. Robert, as always, great to talk to you, and I wish you well with your future uh, films. Great. Always uh, um, enjoy talking with you, Peter. We'll talk again, I'm sure. We will. <laughs> okay. Thanks again. Okay. okay. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.